Okay, let's get started. <laughs> If the tendency <laughs> for the discussion keeps going down, <laughs> I don't know whether I need to prepare the <laughs> next discussion. Okay, uh, this week we are going to talk about uh, neighborhood iterator. Uh, recall last time we talked about image region uh, iterator. It provides you a sequential and efficient access to image content. Okay, uh, about how efficient. I wrote a code uh, to access image content with and without iterators. Uh, and this table lists the running time uh, for both cases. No matter uh, read or write operations, uh, direct access, you can see uh, the running time is much larger than uh, the one using uh, image iterators. And this week, oh uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, just that table. I mean, I made that one just slide. That yeah. yeah, and the homework one. I uploaded the homework one slide uh, to the smart side. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, this week we are going to learn about uh, uh, a little bit another. Uh, Iterator, which is a little bit more uh, complicated, but more commonly used. Okay, first we will understand what a neighborhood is in ITK, and uh, how to use an ITK neighborhood iterator to uh, access pixels in neighborhood, and then we will use the neighborhood iterator to implement a convolution filter. Uh, as you have learned about using Gaussian filter to do smoothing, so you may be familiar with uh, the concept of neighbors of pixels. Uh, generally speaking, uh, the, neighbor, uh, the neighbors of pixels are the pixels which are spatially uh, adjacent to a given pixel. Uh, in 2D case, you can think of four connected region as a neighbor of a pixel. Uh, that's the horizontally and vertically adjacent four pixels, or the eight connected uh, regions, which uh, contains that four connected region and the four diagonally uh, adjacent pixels. ITK extends the neighborhood uh, concept a bit further. Uh, in ITK, a neighborhood is a set of pixels which are at fixed positions uh, relate, relative to a reference pixel. Uh, we call this reference pixel center uh, because for the uh, common regular uh, rectangular re neighborhood, that reference pixel sit in the middle. And uh, the section 11.4 of the ITK software guide uh, introduce uh, the neighborhood iterators. Uh, it briefly introduce some basic concepts about neighborhood, and then its two subsections uh, describes na uh, neighborhood iterator and shaped neighborhood iterator. And uh, for most of the image processing applications, a uh, neighborhood uh, does not need to be as complex as arbitrary shaped. Uh, for most of the applications, it's just the common, very common rectangular ones. And mm, its size is defined by a radius. And uh, the shaped uh, neighborhood uh, is defined by user. You can just specify a list of a list of offsets of the pixels in the neighborhood from the center. 
Uh, for example, for the convolution operation, you will just use a rectangular neighborhood. And uh, the ITK neighborhood iterator uh, provides you efficient way to access pixels in the neighborhood. Uh, how to access uh, neighbor pixels? First, you have to know the index, the position of the reference pixel, and then know the offset of the neighbor uh, pixel from that reference pixel, and calculate the index from, uh, of the neighbor pixel, and then access the pixel. And a uh, neighborhood iterator, they can calculate uh, this for you, so you do not need to calculate the index of the pixel by yourself. You just uh, tell the iterator what the op offset is. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Uh, like I said before, uh, you need to specify the size of the neighborhood. In ITK, uh, for the rectangular neighborhood, uh, it's defined by a, by a parameter called radius. Uh, radius is a one dimensional uh, vector. I mean, each component of the radius uh, stores the extent of the neighborhood in pixels along the corresponding uh, dimension. So the side length along a particular dimension is the, is the corresponding radius component times 2 plus 1. That, that 1 is for the, center, uh, for the center pixel. So the side length of a uh, neighborhood is always odd. And here is an example of 2D neighborhood of radius 2 by 1. So the two more columns on the left and uh, right uh, of the center pixel, and one more row on the top and bottom of the center pixel. And one way to dereference uh, pixels in neighborhood uh, is to think of the neighborhood as a one-dimensional array uh, where every pixel has a unique uh, integer uh, index. We call this uh, index uh, neighborhood position. Uh, it is determined by uh, increment from the upper left forward corner of the, lab, uh, of the uh, neighborhood along the fastest increasing dimension. Uh, first is column in x direction, and then a row in y direction, and then uh, slice in z direction, if there is a z direction, and so on. And uh, the neighborhood iterator also provides you a more intuitive way to access uh, pixels in neighborhood. That's just by the offset. Uh, for example, uh, the pixel at uh, position 0, its offset from the center is minus 2, minus 1. And for example, this point, uh, the offset is 1, 0. And the other important parameter about a uh, neighborhood is stride, uh, which is the difference of the neighborhood positions along a particular uh, dimension. Uh, for example, in this case, the stride in x direction is 1 because the difference between the position between the uh, position of these two adjacent pixels is 1 and the stride in y direction is 5 yeah um, so if you think of this neighborhood as a 2 by 1 by 0 neighborhood in 3D then what's the stride in z direction Fifteen, yeah, yeah. So you can easily transform, I mean, convert uh, the stride to the size and uh, vice versa.
Okay, so I, like I said, the uh, neighborhood uh, positions are very important because you have to use that uh, to access to to access the pixels in neighborhood. Mm, how to create a neighborhood iterator? Uh, you have to specify the radius of the neighborhood and the image uh, on which you are going to perform operation on and the region of the interest uh, of the image. And the syntax of the neighborhood iterator is almost the same as that of the image region iterator, uh, such as uh, increment operation and check whether the uh, iterator points to the end position of the region. Okay, this is a, a example uh, neighborhood. I mean, the numbers in the boxes are the uh, pixel values. Oh, so now if we have a neighborhood iterator points to this neighborhood, uh, how can we access the uh, pixels? Mm, we can use the get pixel function uh, to to read the values at a particular neighborhood position. For example, uh, position seven. That's the position for the center pixel. Then it will return you 0.7. And you can also call this get center pixel to get the uh, pixel value of the center pixel. Okay, then uh, how to get the length of iterator and the stride length. Uh, the, size, uh, the size function returns you the number of pixels in the neighborhood. So uh, in the two by one uh, neighborhood, the size is 15. And there is a, another uh, member function uh, of neighborhood iterator is called get size. That size will return you the, I mean size, uh, n-dimensional size of the neighborhood. So for that two by one neighborhood, it will return you five by three. Right. And uh, if you uh, divide that size by two, you will get the uh, position of the center pixel. So uh, we assign this to C. And if you want to know the uh, stride in Y direction, you, you, uh, you, uh, you set the parameter to be one uh, to indicate that's the Y direction and call the get stride function. Okay, this is the same as before get pixel at position C. And the other one is the uh, what's the pixel at position C minus one? Uh, because the stride in X direction is one. So if C is not on the boundary on this on this line, so C minus one will give you the uh, position of the pixel uh, adjacent one. Uh, I mean one pixel away along the negative x directions. Is that clear? Okay. And uh, similarly, if you minus, uh, I mean subtract c mi by uh, striding y, it will give you the position of the pixels one pixels away in the negative y direction. So it's this pixel is pixel at position two. And C minus one minus one will give you the left, oh no, 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 the upper left uh, uh, pixel of comp, uh, relate, relative to the center pixel. Okay, uh, the increment operation, so in image region iterator, the increment method just moves the uh, pointer of the iterator to the next 
pixel. And in neighborhood iterator, it, it moves the center pixel, and therefore the whole, the entire neighborhood will shift. Oh, okay. Okay, so uh, if you have a symmetric, oh, by the way, uh, the neighborhood is symmetric across the center point in every direction. I forgot to mention that. Um, so if you have a symmetric region of interest, which is defined by radius, and you want to move it ar around the image, so what will this kind of pros procedure remind you? Uh, it's similar to the process of convolution. And to do convolution, you will need three things. One is kernel. That's the weight mask. And you have to, you have, to have a matter to access a region. Oh. To access a part of the image. I mean, that part has the same size as a kernel. And the other way, and you also have to have a calculator to uh, compute the inner product between the kernel and the image region. Okay, first, uh, for the kernel, you can use neighborhood operator. That's a class, that's an ITK class uh, to implement. It's derived from neighborhood. You can think it, it just as a neighborhood, but uh, Every pixel has a value. I mean, you, you can define it by yourself, or you can use the predefined uh, operator. Uh, there are the uh, subclasses of neighborhood operator, uh, such as Sobel operator for age detection, a Gaussian operator. And how to access the image? Uh, then we have just talked about that we can use the neighborhood iterator. And you have uh, note that you have to set the radius of the neighborhood iterator to be the same as your kernel. And the last, the last thing is the inner product calculator. Uh, the neighborhood inner product, this class will provide you a calculator to calculate the in the product. So it's two parameters or two neighborhood. So because the neighborhood operator is a, op is a neighborhood and also, I mean the kernel is a neighborhood and the image region uh, uh, dereferenced by the neighborhood iterator is also is another neighbor. A neighborhood, so you can just send this two to the neighbor, uh, to the inner product calculator. Okay, so these are the ah, these are the process uh, to do a convolution for n-dimensional image. First, design a kernel by yourself or use a predefined one, and then move the neighborhood iterator. Uh, tra let it traverse the image, and then at every position calculate the inner product. Oh, this is a pseudocode uh, for the convolution. Uh, first, you define our inner product calculator as IP, and then you define our operator. It's, here it is a derivative uh, operator. It's a subclass of that neighborhood operator. And you set the order to be one, and then set the direction uh, to be zero. This will uh, gives you a kernel to calculate the partial derivative uh, with respect to the first dimension, and then uh, create uh, create that operator uh, with length only in the specific direction. That's the first direction, and then. Uh, Create an iterator by specifying 
the radius, the image, and the image region. OK, then uh, move the operators to the beginning. Uh, this is why I said this is pseudo code, because it should be go to begin, not set to begin. And then uh, let the iterator go over, go through the image, and at every position calculate the inner product. Okay. Any question about this? Okay, though uh, in those in the code uh, there's no explicit uh, reference to the dimensionality, so it is easy to apply to a image of arbitrary dimension. Um, there's a, there's a group of filters in ITK, the neighborhood operator image filter, uh, it just, it can do what we, I showed you before, I mean, perform a convolution, uh, not just convolution, perform a kernel and calculate the inner product uh, at every possible uh, image position. And you have only uh, you only have to set the input image for that for this filter and set the corner, and it can do the rest. And uh, if you want to do any filtering on uh, on the face image as pre-processing for homework one, and don't know how to start with, uh, you can read uh, chapter six. Uh, of the software guide. Oh. Yeah. When you have a convolution filter, uh -huh. how do you deal with edges? Kind of how how do, you do you do what? Not just a convolution filter. Uh -huh. The na neighbor of the iterator. Uh -huh. um, how does that deal with edges? For example, you mean detect edges? No, the edge of the image. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So the region is going along, mm -hmm. and it's it pushes. Yeah, it pushes the region outside the image. How does that work? Oh, it's a good question. I'm going to talk about that in the next slides. Oh. Yeah. Thank you to ask that question. Okay. So, how about if the neighborhood moves? I mean, outside the image. I mean, the pixel, the out of bound pixels have no values. Then, how to define the operation? So, there is a class called image boundary conditions. The subclasses of it will provide you some rules of how to estimate the out of bound pixel values. Uh, the first one is very easy, called constant boundary condition. It will set the the values of all the out of bound pixels to be a given value. The default one is zero. So um, this is not good when you want to detect the edges in the image. So it will produce a uh, fake edges. Uh, on the boundary of the image. And the other one, a more complicated one, is periodic boundary conditions. This one would just uh, repeat the image in the whole space. So if it goes out, I mean, I think you will get the idea. Just like the Texton, Texton Dr. Carmichael just said before, you just uh, repeat the image. So. Every pixel in the space has a value. But mm, this is not good for the medical images because they are not actually pure odic. This is, uh, there's, there's a one called zero flux Newman boundary condition. This is the default value uh, for the boundary conditions for a neighborhood iterator. Uh, you can tell from the name, it's not a very 
easy uh, boundary conditions. And actually, I don't know. But there is one sentence description in the software guide. You can read that. I mean, I don't understand it a lot. And so it's on page 725, you, if you're interested. OK, so uh, for the neighborhood operator image filter, you can use this member function to reset the boundary conditions. OK, and there's one more, one more thing about the smart neighborhood iterator. If you search this as a keyword in the software guide, it appears only once. I only know that it is used internally by some filter. Mm, yeah, and you can find this on the ITK Doxygen web page. So mm, mm, that's all I know about it. And one more thing is about numeric numeric traits. Mm, also, this numeric traits you can find this on the Doxygen web page. Uh, if you want to know more about it, you have to read the source code. It is in the ITK source slash code slash common directionary. Di directionary. Oh, directory, sorry. So it, it, defines, it defines the some numeric uh, properties for some fundamental uh, data types. For example, the mean value, max, max value, and whether a value is positive or negative. Uh, for, for example, can you guess uh, what's the maximum value for Boolean type? <laughs> there are only two options. <laughs> and uh, well, I can tell you it's true because I guess because the true correspond to one and false correspond to zero. And and it's also uh, easy to guess what's the max ma max value for unsigned char. Is the char correspond to 255? Okay, uh, that's all for today's discussion. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So for the homework on the part three, mm -hmm. uh, I'm interested in counting edges in the picture. So mm -hmm. it was suggested that there's a class, like a statistics class that would count. We count edges? To count edges, yeah. So that, that one, so like, so I guess my question is, what class counts edges, or what's the ITK? Uh, count edges? Yeah. Oh, you want to use edges to define the interestingness? Yeah, yeah. So, like I said, I know that Sobel operator can calculate, uh, can detect age for you. Sobel. Well, the Sobel operator can. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it cannot detect, but it can calculate how likely a pixel is lies on the edge. It can't calculate, I mean, count the edges, because, I mean, how do you define a age? I mean, it's... I think. Oh. So what's a good way to, to use the candy edge detector, or maybe the solo edge detector? What's a good way to use them? Use them to calculate regions that are, or calculate the face face images that are interesting. We have to use some kind of the. We're getting feedback. We have to use some mechanism to decide which of the faces are interesting and which ones are not. One of the suggestions was use the canny edge detector. Yes.
Where did you read it? It was suggested in the PDF of homework one. Right. So, are you, you know, um, one idea would be to. that next image to calculate what is interesting. So count how many are so are, are white to indicate a good edge. That's one way. Another question. 